All right, so welcome back to my review of Dominion. For this video, we're going to be reviewing the Empire's expansion of Dominion. Now, if there's time, I might cover some of the events and landmarks that come with this expansion. Maybe, if there's time. I don't want to spend too much time on this like I have with my past videos. I don't want to go too much higher than them. So let's just get started right away talking about my favorite cards here to my least favorite. Now the Chariot Race is one, is one of my most favorite cards out there. It's obviously my favorite card from the expansion. Basically what you get to do is you reveal the top card of your deck and then you put that card into your hand. Now the cards that you revealed, that you revealed is basically going to be in a race against the player to your left. They will reveal their card and if your card costs more than theirs, you get plus one treasure, plus you get a victory token. Now the treasure is basic, and obviously you get an action, so that's basic, plus you get a card, so that's basic. But the victory token is really cool. Obviously you wanna get those victory tokens because they're, they're that's what you want, because they don't fill your deck with useless cards and you're getting victory points. It's awesome, I like the card a lot. Now what's really fascinating is your opponent is always going to reveal they're always going to reveal the top card of their deck and most likely what's going to happen is it's going to be the same card every time and so even if you fail the first race if you have more than one of these in your hand when you play the first one the next card isn't going to be the same one for you because you're revealing the next card on from your top of your deck and maybe that one will cost more who knows and if their card was low to begin with and you won the first race you could potentially win the next one, and the next one, and the next one, who knows? You could potentially get a lot of victory tokens with this card. It's just super fun. It's obviously awesome to play with, and man, that's why it's my favorite card from the expansion. Okay, so Archive, you get to set aside three cards from your deck. You get to put one of those right away into your, into your hand. The rest will stay there until the beginning of your next two turns. At each time, you're going to just put one of those in, one of those set aside into your hand, basically. Now, if you have a lot of these in your, in play, lots of archives in play, then you're going to get lots of extra cards at the start of your turn, and you know what those are. Some of them may not be that great, but some of them may be good too. It will definitely improve your hands for sure, giving you some powerful turns. And the turn you play it is also very useful as well because you still get an extra action when you play it. Plus, you could potentially put probably the best of the three cards that you got each time you played this into your hand. So, Archive, definitely one of my most favorite uh, durations out there. Second favorite card in the set. Now, there are split piles in Empires. So, a split pile is five cards and five cards. So, five cards will be something like this. The other five cards will be different, and they will be sitting underneath the other five cards like this in the pile. So you can't access these until these are out of the way, meaning you bought these, right? So they go together. And in a thematic sense, the rocks goes together with the catapult. But most often the case is you're not gonna get a chance to really trash too many, or should I say you're not gonna get a chance to basically thematically use the rocks with the catapult too often because most likely often the case you'll be using this with other cards long before you get to the rocks but still let's talk about why I like both of these cards a lot in a thematic sense plus just what they do so you get getting a treasure with the card is basic but you trash a card from your hand now if the card that you trash is costing three or more each other player is gonna get a minus point card and if it's a treasure, each other player is going to discard down to three cards in hand. So it's a militia and a witch, all in one attack. Powerful attack for sure. You still have to trash a card from your hand to do this, and it still has to be something obviously costing three or more and a treasure at the same time. So you'd have to basically trash a silver. Most often in the case, you'll be trashing silvers with the catapult. But when you do manage to get around to trashing the rocks, when you trash the rocks, you get to put the silver into your hand. So basically you catapult a rocks and you get to do the awesome powerful attack, gaining a silver to your hand, losing the rocks in the process. If you ever gain this, however, you'll also get a silver. So if you gain this during your buy, buy phase, you get to put a silver on top of your deck. If you gain this, obviously during your action phase, 
then you'll get to put the silver into your hand. And if you trash this, most likely the case is what's going to happen is you're going to trash it while you're playing it, while you play catapult. And so you'll get a silver in the place of rocks. So you're not losing this additional treasure. You're actually getting more money from it. Plus, you still get to do the powerful attack. Thematically, it's an awesome card. Uh, combination of the two, it's an awesome card. Even without the rocks, it's an awesome card. That's why it's my third favorite card in the set. Um, and to, to come together, they just make an awesome pair for sure. So awesome card. Okay, so the next card in the set is Farmer's Market. Now this is really cool, okay? So let's just talk about is if I had played this first. So it, I play Farmer's Market first. What's gonna happen is I get plus one treasure, okay? And I also put one victory token on the Farmer's Market supply pile. So there'll be a supply pile, obviously, where you bought this from. You'll put a victory token every time you play it. You put a victory token here, most likely, almost every time. You'll put a victory token onto the pile. And then this is worth one money per victory token that's there. Now, plus one treasure and plus one buy is weak, right? But as you play it, you'll get more money. So the next time it gets played, it'll be two and a buy. The next time after that, three to buy. The next time after that, four to buy, which is powerful, right? But then after it gets to four, and there might possibly be more four, more than more than four victory tokens on the pile. There might actually be four or more. It's potentially that could happen. But when it does finally breach that point, then you have to trash the farmer's market. But doing so is going to allow you to gain the victory tokens on the farmer's market pile. So you're, you're trashing this for four, potentially four or more victory tokens. It's totally worth doing. So you might want to have a couple of these in your deck, of course, so that way you can still keep doing that equation. Of course, your opponents are going to be doing the same thing, and so everyone is going to be trying to get those victory tokens while they're trying to add, basically, on their turn by playing Farmer's Market. They're going to be doing the same thing, so there's no guarantee you're going to get it. Get it. Even if you were the player who added the most to that pile, your opponents could still technically beat you to the punch. So that's always a possibility. But the fun thing, is, the fun factor is that potential gamble is super fun. It's super enjoyable. And it's just, it's just a good card. It's fun to play with for sure. Farmer's Market, definitely one of my favorites. Okay, so the Enchantress, its benefit is cool. So we'll talk about the benefit of the card first. At the start of your next turn, you get, to, you get two cards. That's cool. So instead of having five cards for your next turn, you're going to have seven cards as a benefit to playing the Enchantress. Now, when you have the Enchantress in play, every other player, the first action they play ends up being a pig, basically. And the pig can only do plus one card, plus one action. So it ruins their turns because it ruins what their actions can do. Their actions will no longer do what they're supposed to do based on how many enchantresses are, enchantresses are in play. If multiple enchantresses are in play, that means multiple actions will be messed up and become the pig, okay, or the swine. So that's really powerful. It's a very powerful attack for sure. It's not horrible because it's not like they don't get anything for playing the action. They still get a card. They still get another action. So they could potentially still play something else and still have a nice turn. But it's definitely definitely going to mess up their strategy for sure. And that's why I like it. It's an all-around really fun card to play with. Of course, you know, it can also mess up your strategy if other people are going after the same card, Enchantress, and playing it. But still, it's super fun and enjoyable. Something worth trying out. Okay, so Sacrifice is another good card. You trash a card from your hand, and depending on what you trash, you get a benefit. I always do it for victory cards, because if I trash an estate card... I get two victory tokens, so I'm getting rid of a, a victory card, and I'm getting two victory tokens in its place. That's a no-brainer. That's powerful. That's useful. But you might do it for some of the other benefits. Trash a copper and get two plus money. Trash an action card you may not want to use again. Get two cards and two actions. That's pretty powerful nonetheless. So that's Sacrifice. It's a really good one. Another one of my favorites. Now, the next split pile, in fact, the next... Next split pile, and there's another one shortly after that, but the next split pile is Settlers and Bustling Village. Now, both of these cards together I really like, and obviously you're going to have both of these in the same game because it's going to be set up like this with five Settlers sitting on top of five Bustling Villages. Okay, now this is a copper strategy. 
you get to copper basically from your discard pile. If you have a copper sitting in your discard pile, after you get your card in action, you get to put the copper into your hand. That's powerful. Once you get to the bustling village, you get a card, you get three actions. That's a powerful village, one of my favorite villages. And then you get to look through your you get to, you get to look through your discard pile. And if there's a settlers in there, you get to add the settlers to your hand, and then obviously you're gonna be able to play your settlers again if you want to, giving you another card, giving you another copper. Plus, you still probably have three actions because this is also giving you an action too. So it's a, it's just a really good strategy for sure. Definitely a good copper strategy. Definitely one of my favorite cards. Definitely one of my favorite split piles. It's my second favorite split pile, and it's definitely in my top 10 favorite list as far as um, Empires is concerned. It's um, actually, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the seventh one. So it's even in my top 10 favorite cards from Empires. So seven. So the next one is eight, City Quarter. Now it is a debt card, so you will have to pay off some debt unless you have eight treasure to pay for it. It's still technically zero, though, when you think about it. But it's still technically less than zero as well, sort of, because of the debt. You can buy this early on and then take the debt, yes. Or you can wait and then pay off less debt or no debt, depending on how much money you have when you decide to purchase this. It's going to give you two actions, and it's going to give you a card for every action card you reveal from your hand. If you have some action cards in your hand, you'll get some cards too. So that's powerful. It's useful if you play this after a bunch of other cards and actions and stuff like that and you have a huge handful of cards, you could potentially draw a lot of cards with this card. And that's one of the reasons why I like it. It's definitely my eighth favorite card in the set. Okay, so my ninth favorite card in the set is another split pile. Now the encampment is good, but I actually like the plunder more than the encampment because even though it's a simple silver costing five, Every time you play it, you're going to get a victory token. I like that. I want to play as many plunders as I can get my hands on, and I want to play it as often as I can. But to do that, I have to get through these encampments. And here lies the problem. If you get the encampment early on, most likely what's going to happen is it's going to be harder and it's going to take longer to get to the plunders because if you don't reveal a gold or a plunder after you play this card, after you get the two cards and act two actions, then at the end of your turn the encampment will go back to the pile covering up those plunders. Potentially, there would obviously still probably be another encampment there. And yes, you could potentially still buy the plunder even though you're returning the encampment because it's not until the end of your turn that the encampment will go back. But still, still, that does make it maybe one of those cards why I don't want to actually buy in the beginning of the game because then it's a one-time use and it's also going to make it harder to get these. So it's a good one for sure. Um, it's definitely in my top 10. I love it, but it's not one of those I would go for first off just so that way I could try to get myself a gold. I would definitely try to get the gold first and then t and then take my my chances playing this card. Still, that's a very cool card nonetheless, and obviously the Plunder is an awesome card to boot. So that's why it's in my top 10 favorite cards from the set. Now this is the number 10, Legionary. Now this is a basically a, a simple benefit of three treasure when you, every time you play it, and it's one of those cards that is is potentially an attack card. If you have a gold, you can reveal it from your hand, and if you do, each player is going to discard down to two cards in hand, and then they get to draw a card after the fact. So it's definitely a meaner militia, but it's also potentially not going to hurt them either because you have to have a gold in your hand to attack your opponents to begin with. So if you get this early on and you don't have any golds yet, or just don't have any golds when you play it, you may not know you might not always get to attack your opponents with this card. Still, it's a very powerful attack when you do manage to attack them. It's still fun to play with. That's why it's uh, in my top 10 favorite cards. Now, this one is just shy from the, my 10 favorite cards, but it's still a really good one. With this, you can get the buy or two treasure. I don't usually do that, but that's a basic reason why you would want to play it. I usually play it so that way I can gain a differently named car card with the same cost of, of card that I buy. So I have this in play and I buy a five costing card. I can gain another one with a different name from the five pile, or should I say that are that costs five. That's powerful. That's great. Charm is a good one. Definitely one of my favorites. 
Okay, so the groundskeeper is a basic action, but when you have this in play, you get a victory token if you buy a victory card. If you have multiple groundskeepers, you could potentially get some victory tokens. I like that. It's good. It's easy. It's fun. It's enjoyable. I like the groundskeeper. It's one of my favorites. Okay, so engineer is another one of my favorites. Yes, you gain a card costing up to four. That's pretty basic. I mean, that's workshop from the base game. But you can trash this, and if you do, you gain another card costing up to four. So you can actually use this to get two cards costing up to four instead of one. I will most often do that in the beginning of the game several times to get lots of extra cards. And the debt is minor. You get four debt. So if you buy this when you have two money or three money, you're going to get some debt tokens, yes. But still, that's not that much. And you could still potentially just buy this for four anyways to get two cards later down the road at the same time. That's really cool. I like the engineer. It's fun. Okay, so the crown is next on the list. Now, this is basically a throne room variant. If you play this during your action phase, it's basically exactly like throne room. It does cost more than a little bit more than than throne room, but if you but the real the reason why this is actually better than throne room is because if you do manage to get this into your hand and you have no action cards you want to play twice or can't play twice because you just don't have any other action cards, then you can actually save it for your buy phase, and if you do, you get to play a treasure from your hand twice. So if you have a silver in play with the crown, you basically turn it into two silvers, giving yourself four treasure. It's basically four treasure that turn for that turn. That's powerful. If it's a gold, even better. It's six treasure, even better, right? That's awesome. I like that. So the crown is way better than throne room because even if you can't pull off playing an action card from your hand twice, you can at least still do it for the money. Even if it's for a copper, it's still somewhat useful in that regards. It could still be somewhat useful in, instead, of, instead of useless because you couldn't use it for the action phase. So yes, it's another one of my favorites. Okay, so Gladiator is another split pile. Now the Gladiator itself is just okay. I don't know if I love it. It's an okay card. Um, you get to reveal a card from your hand and then the player to your left may reveal a copy from their hand. If they don't, you get an extra treasure for playing the gladiator, and you trash a gladiator from the supply. And because it is a split pile, it will act, give you access to the fortunes that much sooner. Now, the fortune is a powerful treasure, sometimes. But first, you have to have eight money just to purchase it, and then you're going to get eight debt tokens. So if you want, don't want to get eight debt tokens, then you're going to need more than eight treasure, obviously. But chances are, you're going to have just enough to get it, and then you're going to get eight debt tokens. But it won't take long to pay off, especially with this card here, because when you play this, you double the money. You you double your money if you haven't yet this turn. So you play this last, you play this after all the other treasures during your buy phase, your silvers, your golds, your coppers. And then depending on what you have, you'll double it. So if you had eight money and then you played this, now you have 16 treasure instead of eight. That's powerful, right? I like that. And you get a buy, so that's even better. So you're going to definitely want to probably buy a couple of cards with that ability for sure. And then when you gain this, you gain a gold per gladiator you have in place. So if you had a gladiator when you bought this, you could get a gold to boot. So that's it's a really good card. Definitely one of my favorites. The gladiator is simply okay, but the two of them combined is definitely good nonetheless. Okay, so the next set of cards is actually a bunch of different cards. They're actually castles, and so, man, they go, and they're all victory cards here, obviously. And you basically set them up like this. If you're playing with two players, you're not going to play with all of these castles. You'll play with just basically one of each of these, and some of these only have one. But if you're playing with more than two, then you'll have all of them. Now, the first castle, the humble castle, it's worth a victory point for every castle you have. So if you're going... To obviously try to get a lot of castles, you're definitely going to want to hold on to this card, even though it's only one money. But there's two of those. Humble Castle. It's okay card. It's an okay one. It's, it's an okay one. I don't know if I'd keep it necessarily, even that, despite that fact. Now, the Crumbling Castle is not a, is not a castle I actually wouldn't want to keep either, even if I was going for this route. Because when you gain or trash this, you get a victory token and a silver. So yes, when you get it, you get a victory token, which is awesome. It's worth a victory point, yes, but you're also getting a silver too. That's awesome. If you can trash this, which I would do, I'll get another victory token, so I don't really, really worry about losing this. 
and I get another silver. So that's powerful. I like that. So even if I'm not planning on keeping my castles, I will still try. I mean, even if I'm, if, even if if I even if I'm planning on keeping my castles, I mean, I am still probably going to get rid of this if I can, just because of that extra stuff. Now this one, you either trash this castle here, or you trash another castle from your hand, maybe. <laughs> the crumbling castle you might want to trash with this card. And then if you do, you gain a castle from the castle pile. Doesn't matter what castle is sitting on the top of the pile. It could be any one of these, even the highest one. So this is something you might want to hold off to until you start getting to the higher castles so you can get one of the better ones basically for free. I like that. It's definitely good. Even if you're, even if you're just simply trashing this one, there's still some in here you might want to get your hands on because it's only two victory points after all. So that's the small castle. The haunted castle is very interesting. Um, you gain this during, when you gain this during your turn, you get a gold, and then each other player with five or more cards in hand put two cards back on top of their deck. So it's basically like the ghost ship from Seaside. You're only gonna get to do this the one time during the entire game, but you're also getting a gold when you get it too, so that's cool, and it's worth two victory points. So that's a good one. I like that one. The Opulent Castle is really interesting because if you have a lot of victory cards, and hence you could potentially have a lot of victory cards because you could have potentially have a lot of castles too, you can discard any number of victory cards and get two money per victory card you discard it. That's cool. It's worth three victory points, so that's okay in that regards, even though the cost is seven. But, you know, it's not the best card in the world. There are times when I have a lot of victory cards and then I can get the extra money, and sometimes it just doesn't work out. Still, it's a good one. Okay, so that's the Opulent Castle. The Sprawling Castle. When you gain this, you gain a duchy or three estates. That's really cool. So you're getting this and a duchy. That's powerful. Sprawling Castle might be one of the one will be probably one of the ones you want to go for for sure if you use the small castle effect to gain a castle. That might be one to go for. The Grand Castle, you get five victory points with this one but when you gain this you reveal your hand and you get plus one victory token per victory card in your hand or in play that's cool you could potentially have some victory cards when you when you do gain this so you could get some victory tokens for sure but most often the case you might get one or two and then you're getting five victory points which is still good but i don't know i think the sprawling castle is still better and then the King's Castle is the last one. It's just worth two victory points per castle you have. But chances are it's not going to give you a lot of victory points because chances are you might have a castle or two at most, maybe. So it's not something I would go for, um, most likely not. It's actually probably not even one I would bother getting unless I already have a lot of castles. So that's the castles. Let's move on. Okay. Now we're getting to the cards that I just simply consider definitely okay. So this one is an okay card. Uh, you get three cards and you discard two cards. That's okay. Um, it's actually, yeah, I like it way more than Warehouse from Seaside for sure. Because that one you, you got three cards and you had to discard three cards. So you at least get to keep a card. And then when you buy this you get an extra buy. Uh, so that's basic. You could, if you had a lot of money, but you didn't have an extra buy and you bought this, you could still buy something else potentially if you had the money. So that's form. It's an okay card. Temple is okay. You get a victory token every time you play it, and then you trash one card from your hand, one to three differently named cards from your hand. Now, you're not going to get any benefit for trashing all these differently named cards, but you do have to trash at least one card when you play the temple. So that's something you'll have to make a mental note of. And then you'll add one victory token to the temple supply pile every time you play this card. And then when you gain this temple from the temple supply pile, you get all of the victory tokens that are sitting on the temple. So it's sort of a rat race, but most likely often the case is what's going to happen is there's only going to be two sitting on this pile and someone's going to buy temple. They're going to buy it every time there's two there. Two, two. Or someone's just going to buy it every time. So the chances are there's not going to be a lot of them sitting here when it gets bought by somebody. If there's one sitting here, they might potentially not buy it. But I've seen it bought every single time when there's just two sitting on the temple. So that's temple. It's an okay card. Now the villa is very wonky. Um, the action is basic. 
but it's wonky because when you buy it, you get returned to your action phase. You could potentially play some more actions, that means, if you have the actions to play, of course, but you also gain this too. So if you had action cards in your hand, you weren't able to play, and you buy this, you return to your, 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 your action phase, you can play this, get two actions, and then you could play those action cards you weren't able to play. So that's interesting, but it's wonky, and usually often the case, I just don't see it worth much in the sense of playing it. It doesn't work out that often. So that's why I just simply call it an okay card, but definitely close to the bottom of the barrel. Now the last split pile is also uh, obviously sort of to the bottom of the barrel. With the Patrician, you could potentially get a powerful card. You reveal a card from the deck. If it's five or more, you get to put it in your hand. Towards the end of the game, that that's powerful because you could get some golds that way, but you could also get provinces too if you think about it. Or you maybe get some action card costing five. That's also possible. So that's cool, but it's not super useful in the beginning of the game because you're it's cheap after all. Now, obviously, the pile, the card that's underneath it, the Emporium here, the action is basic, but when you gain this, if you have at least five action cards in play, you get two victory tokens. So often the case is, if I'm going to go for the Emporium, I want to make sure I have at least five action cards in play. Otherwise, I don't see the point in buying the Emporium at all, because the action is basic anyways. I'm only buying it for those victory tokens, which is why I kind of see these two as kind of the bottom of the barrel for me, for sure. I don't hate these cards, but they come very close to that situation. Definitely uh, just simply bottom of the barrel, an okay card for sure, okay card set. Okay, so four more cards here left. The Wild Hunt, you get three cards when you play it, and you add one victory token to the Wild Hunt supply pile. Or you can choose the section, second option, okay? The second option is, or you can gain an estate from the estate pile, and if you do, you take all the victory tokens that are sitting on the Wild Hunt. So, obviously, this is another one of those that somebody could beat you to the punch. You could potentially play this to get the three cards, of course, and put a victory token on the Wild Hunt. But someone else could buy an estate after playing it and get the victory token. So, you know, um, it's an okay card. I don't hate it. It's an okay one. Okay, so the capital. This is powerful. You get six money, you get a buy. That's powerful. But then every time you discard this from play, you get six debt tokens. Ouch. Now there are some card combos out there that could actually give you the six money, the buy. I think there's one in particular. I forget what it's called. And then you actually would trash the capital. There are cards that let you trash cards that you have in play that are treasure cards. If you can get one of those particular cards to do that for you, then you don't have to worry about the debt. So that's something. But often the case, that won't happen very often. You're probably not going to get a game too often where you can do that. So you're going to get six debt tokens, and then you'll have to pay off. And then if you can, you can pay off the debt tokens. So yes, you get six money, but you could potentially pay off some of that debt if you don't use all six treasure to buy something. Or should I say more if you have more than that, obviously. But still, that's something at least. Um, but that's why it's sort of bottom of the barrel for me. It's an okay card in my eyes. But, and it's powerful for sure, and people will like it for sure, but I don't know. It's just simply okay in my eyes. Okay, bottom of the barrel, okay. So the last two cards here are probably the only cards in the set that I actually don't like. This one, the Overlord, it's a debt card, and so is the Royal Blacksmith. They're both debt cards. Don't get me wrong, Royal Blacksmith is powerful because you get to draw five cards, and you could get this early on, of course, but the problem is you reveal your hand and you have to discard all of the coppers. Someone like me, who doesn't usually get rid of coppers too often, I tend to not bother myself with the Royal Blacksmith. Unless I have gotten rid of all my coppers, or most of them. Then I might go for it, for sure. And it's powerful, for sure, but I still don't like this card. I hate the Royal Blacksmith. And the Overlord, you can play an action card from the supply costing up to five. You can play it as it were, that action card. And then this card... This is that card until it leaves play. So it's kind of wonky too. I don't like this one either. It's potentially very powerful, yes, but I don't usually go after these two cards, period, regardless. I just don't like the car these cards at all. I mean, I'm sure it, they're, I know they're both pretty powerful for sure, but I don't like them. And so that's all of the cards, obviously, from 
empires. Now, there are events and there are landmarks. And landmarks were officially introduced in Empire's expansion. And obviously, the events were originally introduced in the Adventures expansion. And there are some here I like and some I don't like. But I'm only going to mention a few that I like because this video is already pretty long as is. If you want to know what every single event does or every single landmark does, I do have videos where I talk about each of these cards in length, in detail. So you can look those up on my channel if you really want to see all of the cards. But... I'm just going to talk about the few that are like. Okay, so Dominate, it's 14 treasure. It's an event. When you purchase it, you gain a province. If you do, you get nine victory tokens. That's awesome. I love that. Dominate, my most favorite event ever. Donate, you get eight debt tokens when you purchase this. But then after this turn, you put all of the cards from your deck and discard pile into your hand. Into your hand. And then you can trash as many as you want. And then you shuffle, obviously, your your hand and deck into your deck and all that, and then draw five cards. So it's a powerful way of getting rid of all the cards you don't want early on, and then just take some debt in the process. It's awesome. I love Donate. Uh, the Wedding, you have to have four money to purchase this, but then you also get three debt tokens. But if you do get the Wedding... You get a victory token and a gold every time. So it's a it's an easy way of getting golds early on in the game and lots of them. And potentially gaining, obviously, some victory tokens in the process. Wedding is a nice one. Delve is a good one. It just costs two money, but it's basically going to let you get a silver for just two money. So that's awesome. Plus, you get another buy. So if you have four money and you buy the Delve twice, you get two silvers. That's a no-brainer. That's powerful. If you want some silvers, Delve is an awesome way to do it. Triumph is another one of my favorites. This one, it's five debt tokens. Gain an estate. If you did, plus one victory token per card you've gained this turn. This is useful if you've gained a lot of cards and then bought a lot of cards and then, then bought this, getting the debt, but then gaining the estate and then getting a ton of victory tokens because you bought a lot of cards beforehand and gained a lot of cards beforehand. It's Triumph. It's awesome. I like it a lot. And it's also... One of my favorites. Um, and this one, and, th and we'll just do two more, okay? So Banquet is a really good one for three. You get two coppers, and then you can get a, no a non-victor card costing up to five. So it's an easy way of getting five costing cards, plus you get two coppers. For me, as since I'm a copper strategist, I really like the Banquet. I don't mind getting those two coppers, for sure. The Ritual is interesting because you purchase this for four, but you're getting a, you're getting a minus point card. But if you do get a minus point card with this ritual, then you're also going to trash a card from your hand. And then depending on what the card you trashed, you're going to get victory tokens and per treasury costs. That's powerful. It's totally worth doing, in my opinion, for the minus point card, especially if you have a way of trashing that minus point card later down the road. It's totally worth it. So that's ritual, and that's one of my favorites. And the rest of these are good. I mean, the last few I don't like. I don't like Windfall. I don't like the Advance. I don't really like Salt the Earth or Annex that much or Conquest. And Tax is simply okay, but I'm not going to talk about them any further. If you want to know what they do, like I said, just look up those videos. I'm only going to talk about four of these cards from the Landmarks, and then we're done. So the Fountain, I really love this because it works with my Copper strategy. At the end of the game, if I have at least 10 coppers on my deck, I get 15 victory points. That's awesome. So if everyone didn't, if, if I'm the only one that went this route, I'm getting 15 extra victory points. That's powerful. But most likely, if Fountain is in the game, everyone is going to buy those extra coppers. They're going to buy three extra coppers. So that way they get 50 victory tokens. That, or, or should I say 15 victory points. That's a no-brainer. The museum is awesome because you get two points Two victory points per differently named card you have. That's cool. I like Museum. If you have a lot of differently named cards, it's going to get you a lot of victory points at the end of the game. The Orchard is cool because you get four victory points per differently named action cards you have three or more copies of. So this rewards you for having tons of action cards and having at least three of them and having differently named action cards and a lot of the differently named action cards potentially getting four for each time. So um, if you had three action cards, and then another three, and then another three, and then another three. That's four, eight, twelve, and so on. 
So that's powerful. I like that. I like this landmark a lot. And then Tomb is another one of my favorite landmarks. When you trash a card, you get a victory token. So if you're playing with cards that trash cards, when you trash cards, you get a benefit of a victory token every time. That makes it even better. I like that. So Tomb is another one of my favorite landmarks. And there's some other in, others in here I really like, but there's just too many here to talk about. And this has already been a long video. So like I said, if you want to know what the rest of these landmarks do, and there's quite a few... Look them up on my YouTube channel. I explain every card in detail on the Empire's What's in the Box videos. So just look those videos up. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a like if you guys liked this video. And I'll see you guys again next time.